Howdy folks, good to see y'all, good to be back, everybody had a nice weekend, I think my microphone should be working, still trying to remember how to do all of this after taking a, just one week and one week's break and everything went haywire, so go figure, but here we are, got a bit of a special project I'm going to work on today, uh, I know a lot of people have asked about uh, doing exotics and doing full exotic things like that, so we're going to work on uh, Doing a little bit of that today. This is a, an unusual order for me because most of my customers are out of state, usually in Texas or New York or, or California. But this customer is actually in my hometown, which is very neat. It's almost almost never do I get to actually deliver anything or, or see people's reactions when they receive the things I make. So this will be a, a nice treat. Uh, had a good weekend. If you saw over uh, on my Instagram post, we had a little makers meetup. Uh, the Youngstown, uh, Greater Youngstown area makers. Uh, group. Uh, we met over at Sarah's Ceramics Studio on Mahoning Avenue. There were a couple of us there. There was obviously Sarah from Sarah's Ceramics, another Sarah from uh, A Smidgen of Everything, uh, Corinne from Corinne Catlin Designs, who initially started the group and, and got everybody together. Then we had the uh, the leather workers. There was myself, and there was Eric from Master of None Leather, and uh, my, my friend Kevin from Ashen Relics, both local, so check them out. And they're present uh, in spirit, if not physically, was Liz from Liz Soaps and Jason from Jason's Marvelous Popcorn. I think I got everybody. I don't think I missed anyone with that. But yeah, Sirius Ceramic Studio on Mahoning Avenue. Check it out. A lot of local makers uh, have stuff for sale there. And it's just a neat little, neat little ceramic studio, too. So definitely check that out if you're, if you're local here and, and looking to find some good uh, area makers and things like that. So hope you got, to, hope you got your coffee. Certainly need it today. Went from being like 84, 85 over the weekend to around uh, 60, 65 ish here today, pouring down rain. Nice. I, I happen to really like overcast, rainy days. I think it's a holdover from uh, working at the paint shop because I always knew any time it was raining and overcast, there would never be any customers for the day. So I just had the whole day to myself. So just kind of enjoying the nice, quiet day here. We're working on a couple things over the weekend, I'll show you. Might have seen on my Instagram today. Here's what we worked on last week. This is what we did last week here. This was the steel gray museum calf and the cherry glazed alligator mid wallet. Look at that shine. Just look at that. 
That is just, just breathtaking. And that museum calf, what fun stuff to work with. What a nice, nice texture that gives us on the inside. So that's all done. They're going to get that mailed out probably tomorrow. Then I've been working on a couple for fun projects here. Had a, a lieu of orders coming up. So I decided to just take some time and make some inventory out of some stuff I had sitting around here. So I've had these uh, alligator hides sitting around for years and not doing anything with them. So I decided to finally make something. So I've got a nice, making a set of uh, summer colors uh, card wallets here. So we've got yellow, pastel green, the orange, which I've yet to stitch. I tried a different different scale pattern arrangement on this one. So look at the, on my left thumb here, look at the uh, blank scales and then same thing inverted on the other side there. So kind of cut them from both uh, both sides from the same area, just on opposing uh, opposing sides of it there. I think it gives it kind of a, a neat effect, a little different from what I normally do. Then I'm real excited for this next one that's coming up. I'm going to be doing uh, in a little bit here. This was sent to me from the Chef Knives Discord group. So very excited to get to make a uh, be making a sheath for this beauty. I don't do too many knife sheaths, but uh, this one is certainly deserving of it. Look at that. Look at that Damascus pattern on that blade. Just magnificent. So very, very cool. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to make an actual proper video of this. So trying to get back to a little bit of my form on that. So I won't be streaming that, but I will do full-on, edited, put-together video for that. So keep your eyes open for that. With that out of the way, I think that covers old business. Let's get into new business. Robert, I'm glad uh, I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad I inspired you to try some alligator. It is a it is a wonderful material to work with. Uh, it can be intimidating because of the price point, but it really does make a beautiful product. If you're thinking of trying exotics, but the alligator is a little too rich for you, consider what we're going to work with today. Uh, lizard, in my opinion, is a very very underrated exotic. Um, for whatever reason, and I, I don't know why. I, I don't understand why it doesn't really have the same pull as alligator does, but it's it's a wonderful, wonderful exotic material, and it is not nearly so uh, difficult to approach as the alligator is. You know, it's it's a little less expensive to to acquire, and you can still make such beautiful stuff out of it. I mean, look at look at the pattern on that. That is just remarkable. You can't get that really anywhere else. This is just how it comes. This is the natural ring lizard finish. So we're going to make some use of this today, and I'll show you how we're going to do this. Hello, Don. Glad you're here. Glad you could join us. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to make something for you. Uh, Don is the uh, the gentleman who commissioned this wallet. Like I said, it, he's actually local to me, which almost never happens. So I actually got to drive over and meet him, had my briefcase and everything, and, and felt like I knew what I was knew what I was doing for a hot minute there. So that was a that was a good experience. I enjoyed the hell out of that. I'll show you what we're going to do here. We're going to make a mid wallet from this. Get the template out here. So the the exterior is going to be ring lizard. And I know it's a little hard to see here with the, the the transparent template over top of the ring lizard. So if your eyes are bugging out and you're getting a little hypnotized from this, don't don't worry too much. Don't don't think too much about. It. But the center of this in between my hands is going to be what the back is. Thanks for the sub. Much appreciated. Thank you, Blake. Uh, so we're going to do the back with the ring lizard, and you'll notice that still leaves us in between my hands of where the back is going to be, but you notice that leaves us a lot of the flank left over. And while Don and I were talking, we thought it would be very interesting if we made use of that on the inside. So we're going to have a little bit of a transition of color from white on the outside edge to the inside edge being with that natural black transition there, and it's going to meet in between... It's going to meet up with this black Delaro in the middle there. So you're going to have a little strip of the textured black Delaro surrounded by the black to white transition of the uh, ring lizard scales. So let me get some of my template pieces out here. As you can see here, I've got a couple uh, other pieces cut out already. I kind of took care of that already for you there, save a little bit of time. We're going to line these pieces um, with the set. I have some leftover steel gray museum calf which is kind of similar in tone. It works out well for that. It's never going to be seen. It's only going to be felt. So this is what's actually going to be the back side of this. We're going to have our ring lizard glued to the outside of this. And again, I'll show you. That's going to be the real topic today is 
aligning and choosing of these scales. Um, making full exotic wallets, it is at once less difficult and more difficult than you might think. Um, it's less difficult in the act of physically doing it. It actually is not terribly hard to figure out how to glue all these things together and make them work. What is a little more difficult is actually learning how to align the scales, what looks good and what doesn't. I did a, um, my first ever full alligator wallet was a pocket organizer that I did a couple of years ago. And it looks great, but immediately after doing it, I could see what I would have done differently. And that has kind of led me down this path of getting a little bit better at each time. So I definitely recommend trying it. Uh, but it does take a couple attempts to kind of figure out what works and what doesn't. So hopefully watching today, I can answer a couple questions for you and explain a little bit of that to you and save you a little bit of heartache and time there. Because uh, if you screw up with this, the uh, especially with alligator, it is pretty heartbreaking because it is very expensive stuff. You don't get a lot of chances to uh, to do it over. And before we get too far into it, talking about making mistakes, I showed you the ones I was working on. Here are, here are two pieces of uh, of those wallets I ended up just not using for various reasons that either were wrong. This one I cut upside down. This one I ended up having a small blemish on it that I just wasn't happy with. And spot it right there. So talk about screwing up and having to, to make do and not being able to reuse pieces. Even somebody who does it as much as I do, it still happens. You'll still do it. Make mistakes. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. You might have seen in the background there, my wife is not out in the garden today, so there is a chance that you will see Cap today. In fact, let's just do it. Let's just get it. Put it over here. He came out here and he disappeared. I have no idea where he went. I heard a cat come out. He came out, scritch scratched a little bit, and then he must have... Must have went back inside. I don't know where he went, but he'll turn up again. So enough screwing around. Let's actually, let's do the thing. So the biggest thing that we're going to have to do on this one is uh, determine how we want to do the back. I think we want to do it like this. I want to do a horizontal cut because I want to, want to have that transition there. But the biggest thing I need to make sure of is that when I cut the back out, I need to make sure I'm leaving plenty of room I still have enough to transition uh, the white to the black on the interior the way I want to. So I'm just kind of taking, I'm taking my template pieces and kind of putting them here and there, hither and thither, and making sure that I've got enough room. Steve, if you want me to get him, I think he's just in the other room lounging. I can go grab him if you want. Enough people, enough people say they want the cat. I will get the cat. good take a take a sip of coffee here before you do anything irrevocable like cutting something i always take a take a drink first and just take a hot second and think about it slowing down is a big part of this moderating yourself and keeping yourself from moving too quickly can save you uh, a lot of heartache <laughs> that's something I, I struggle to remind myself of even now Okay. I think that looks good. I think I'm happy with that. Check. There he is. I didn't even have to go get you. You just came out on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Look, this wallet matches you. This wallet's in your colors. Black and white. See, Steve said you were going to wander in, and he was right. What's out there? Oh, the birds. Now you can stay out here if you're going to be good. Thank you. Are you going to be a good cat or are you going to be a bad cat? Are you going to be Mr. Behavior? Well, we might not get a whole lot done today. <laughs> Alright, I have to, I do have to do work. I have to do the thing. I put you in. Oh, you want down? Okay, here. Go watch the bird. Those birds. Get up. All right.
You don't look like you're going to behave too much. You look like you're going to be pretty bad. Let's let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Hi. Hello. Come here. Come on. Think. I think I'm going to have to lock you out. Ready to say goodbye to Dima. Too interested. Made your presence known too much. It shows about me, not you. He'll be back later. Alright, that's a good way to waste 15 minutes. <laughs> so, where was I? We're going to cut the back first. Because the back is going to determine how much space we have left for these. Well, obviously, we need enough to be able to do the back, so... Very important. I'm going to come up a little higher... Now, as I'm doing this, you'll note, let me shift this for you here. You'll note that up here, where the legs meet the flanks, we get a lot of creasing scales, a lot of teeny tiny scales. We want to stay away from this if we can. It's okay, it's not bad, but it's definitely not as nice as this. There are places we can use this. We want to keep those less visible rather than more visible. So we're going to try to see her away from those. So I think we're going to do... We're going to keep the belly down low. Keep the, the backside down low here. Good midpoint here. There, and I'm just checking my templates against what I've marked out here to make sure I've got enough space. I do. Let's cut it. Let's, let's quit talking about cutting it and just do it. Okay. I tell you what, no matter how many times I do that, I, I never, I say it every time, I'm always nervous every time I do that. So this is going to be our wallet back. This is what the exterior of the wallet's going to look like. We're going to set this aside. We don't need that for a while yet. The big thing we're going to work on today is going to be our interior. You notice now, when I lay this template against this here, let me move my keyboard out of the way. When I lay this template against the cards, uh, against the, uh, the, the alligator here, against the lizard, good lord, I have a nice transition of white on the outside edge to black on the inside. Now we can actually kind of get a feel for how that's going to look. I'm going to have the transition of the black against this nice little strip, the laro here, just to kind of accent it and kind of play with the way we have this. I like that. I like the way that looks. That, this is going to be the most important piece, this outer card slot, because this here, you see all of it. So we need to pick a nice, good section of hide for that. Unfortunately, these flanks here are just right. I usually leave about an eighth of an inch oversize on each edge, because I like to trim it later. I'm going to try to keep that as small as I can on this inside edge, because I want as much of that black as I can get. I'm only going to go down to about a sixteenth on that. that. So there's our left interior pocket. Let's do the same for the right. And pick a nice piece here. So here's our two pockets. Now the big thing that we have to do next is the way these play together is important. We don't want to, so if we're going to do it full interior, full lizard interior, we don't want to have this piece like this. We have to take a look at it and kind of anticipate how these parts are going to lay together. So we have to do 
this next visible strip for this card slot here. We don't want these uh, scales to be wildly different. We don't, we, don't, we don't want to use a piece up here next to this part. You want to have the hide, you want to have the hide arranged in a way that it looks like it is natural. A good example of that is this orange one. You can see, if you look closely, you can see the way the, the scales all kind of line up, because they all came from the same part of the hide. And learning how to pick and choose that is important. And that's what makes one of these look really nice or just nice. We want to go for really nice or better if we can. So paying very close attention on alligator, it's a lot more obvious because you can see where the, uh, the scales are much larger. On lizard, you get a little bit of leeway just because the size of the scales is so much smaller. You get a little bit more, more room to play with that. Yeah. Uh, Blake, the, uh, the templates are all my own design. I draw them all up in uh, Inkscape. And then I'll print them on cardstock first until I'm sure that they work and I'm sure that I like them. And then after usually about a year or so of doing that, every year I'll do a bulk order from a place called Ponico, P-O-N-O-K-O. -O. They're a, a, a laser cutting service, and I have them do it on the transparent acrylic. So they engrave all of these in here. So that's, that's how I do it. I, I make all my own designs and I have them laser cut. The good ones that I end up liking each year, I do a bulk order and have them all cut up. So I've been using this one for about two years now. Uh, doing them transparent is definitely the way to go because if you're working a lot with exotics and you need to be aware of that scale pattern, it makes it very, very easy to keep that uh, you know, directly visible when you're doing that. So, as I was saying, the next part of this wallet is this strip here, this visible part here. It's only about maybe three quarters of an inch. So we don't need to cut a whole, we don't need to cut another whole piece of that we can get away with doing just about usually an inch to an inch and a half is all we really need. So this little strip right here, these little kind of winglets that we've cut, is actually already perfect. Not only is it coming directly from the same part of the hide, it's actually very conveniently the right size. So we're going to have this and it's going to look like this. This strip of lizard is only going to extend down to about here because you're not going to see it when you're using the wallet. Um, even if you pull the card slots apart and look down there, it'd be very, very difficult to see where this ends down here. So you don't need to use all of this. Learning uh, how to do that is also important because you'll notice on here, it's a little difficult to see, but we have a small scar here. And it doesn't look bad, but it is there. If we can hide it, we should. And we'll be able to do that by clever use of this here. So we can actually get the same you actually can't even see it here. It's so perfectly matched up here. We can hide that scar, show only the nice part, and still use the hide effectively. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to take this template for our next pocket. It's going to go right across the top there. So here's our next pocket. This is all the lizard we're going to use for that. That's going to be backed against this piece of calf skin here. So the structure actually comes from the calf skin. This is purely just a, a visual, almost kind of veneer, you might call it, going on top of it there. Do the same for the other side here. I, I realize I had, um, I had a gentleman uh, conversing with me in, in French on a, a comment that I, I, I talk very quickly and it's hard to keep up if you're not a native English speaker. I told him, and I'll tell you as well, I get very enthusiastic when I'm working, especially with something I'm excited to do, and I, I have difficulty moderating the speed of my speech. So if I'm speaking too quickly or something is unclear, don't, don't be shy. Give me a shout out in chat and tell me, hey, slow down, damn it. It's, it's okay. I, don't, uh, I won't be offended by that. There. So here's our starboard side piece, if you will. Put these aside. Over. Don't need them. Yeah. One thing I always struggle with is keeping the workbench organized. But you can see we're starting to kind of get it together. We're getting the layout of a, of a wallet done here. So the last part of this, here's our outer. Here's the piece we just cut. There's a top part that needs to be cut as well. So we kind of have our choice. We have this whole section of, of hide left to kind of choose this from. Lay this on here, here, come up to about here, there, so 
Here's our top section. Do the same for the other side. Do we have two? Perfect. What I'm going to do real quick, bear with me here. You might think that looking at this, that there's not a lot of use we can do with this. And you would be mistaken. Uh, these scrap pieces, I hesitate to use the term scrap, but in this case it technically is scrap. Um, on these parts that are going to be hidden under the other parts, we want to have a nice transition there. We, we want to sky this bottom edge. Kind of make it feather down a little bit nicer. So I'm going to use the bell skyver for that. But on something irreplaceable like this, um, we want to make sure that the bell skyver is adjusted properly. So I'm going to cut a piece up here that I have no real use for. I'm not going to use it for anything. I'm going to test the bell skyver on this piece first. We don't need to skive it very much. It's already very thin. This is already about half a millimeter. But anytime you're getting down into very, very fine, thin measurements with the bell skyver, you run the risk of mutilating or destroying the leather. So, um, if you'll pardon me for a moment, I'm going to step over to the bell skyver and test this real quick and make sure that I've got it dialed in just right. So that when I run these pieces through, I don't have a whole lot of fear about destroying them. Uh, because as you can see, there is no going back. These are cut. There's no more hide left. That's it. If I, if I ruin them, they're ruined and i got to order another hide. And this makes it for a very quick, quick and embarrassing live stream. So, I'll be right back. Give me just a moment just to test this. All right, that'll do. So that's set up pretty reasonably. Before we do anything else, I should all my pieces together. You may be thinking, "Ah, oh, he's really done it to himself now. He can't uh, can't tell where it goes." You can tell which side is which by looking at the direction of the scales. And it's a little hard to tell, but you'll notice there are patterns here. These are kind of all curving downwards. You can match them up that way. I know, I need a, I need a camera for the Skyver. Uh, I need to sell some more wallets before I can afford another nice camera for it. So, we'll get there. Goes for that. Goes for that. Okay. So, I'm going to do these two first real quick. I'll be right back. Here. All right. So that didn't do a whole lot, but it did enough. It's, it's enough to, to make a difference when you're layering them together. So this here, we're done with this. We can go ahead and put this aside. All of this in here is still useful for something else, so we can still find a way to use this. I'm tempted, now that I think about it, I'm almost tempted, kind of, rather than using the Delaro, because we have this nice center section here, we could conceivably take just this little strip, have just the strip of the ring leather visible in the middle. We'll come back to that. We're going to hold on to this and think about that. How would that look? How would that actually look? It look pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's compare it to the Delaro. Delaro also works. I kind of like the starkness of the very dark black in the center. I don't know. We'll think on that. We've got some time. Don, if you have any opinion on that. Feel free to sound off in chat. <sighs> Finish up my coffee here. For the coffee nuts here, here's 
nothing of use. Little people talk about uh, the uh, the self warming mugs. I just have a warming plate. It costs like twenty five bucks. It even has a nice little fake wood texture. You leave your mug on it, it keeps it warm. Actually hot. So even though I've had this cup of coffee for like an hour, it's still nice and hot. That's a very good point, Roger, and I kind of agree. I think it, it is a little... If it was anything else, if it was alligator, if it didn't have these ring spots in there, it would be a little better. But it is very busy. So I kind of... Uh, my gut says stick with the Delaro in the center. But that is, a, that is a, an astute point you make. It is a little bit busy, and it's it's hard to, to sometimes breaking it up like this way. Yeah, yep. See, I I've got the right crowd in here. These people know what they're talking about. It's easy to go too much. It's easy to do too much. That little bit of black breaks it up just enough to keep it classy, rather than keeping it keeping it gaudy. I had I had a lot of people when I was painting cars. That was always a big thing. I had to try to talk people out of. I had a, a white 68 Mustang that we did, and this car was immaculate. I mean, it was, we did everything. We stripped it all down, down to bare steel, blocked it, 2K'd it, you know, you, you name it. We did, we did the works to it, and it's a show car around here. Um, and it was, it was an icy blue white, and he really was hard up to do ghost flames on it. And I talked him out of it, and I'm very glad I did, because it would have taken it from being a very elegant and beautiful and classy car into just being another, uh, wouldn't, it wouldn't have been right. Yep. Yep. I'm glad you agreed, Don. Yep. It's it's easy to get uh, tempted by certain things. Sometimes you got to talk yourself out of it, but I think I think the, the general consensus is right. I think sticking with black on the center keeps it classier than doing it all lizard. So, every now and then you just got to gotta think it through. Sometimes you just got to talk it through if you're me. All right, so we've solved that problem. We're going to put this aside here. Scrap drawers over here, you know. Like I said earlier, I have cut out a couple pieces. Uh, the weight on the Delaro, this is 0.8 millimeters. So this is about one and a half to two ounces. And I've done some skiving on the back here. Uh, on these wallets, I only skive the outside edges and the bottom edges, and I leave the center full thickness just because we're gonna have we're gonna have the card slots here. They're going to add up a little bit of thickness here. There's going to be more thickness at the bottom than at the top. So I leave the top unskived, and I only skive the bottom. Uh, the thread is going to be this kind of bluish, steelish, gray thread that kind of works in between all colors. It works well with the black, works well with the white, and it actually kind of almost disappears against the modeling of the ring lizard. You actually can't even really see it there when you get into this. So on the exterior, it's almost going to be invisible. You'll really only catch hints of it on the inside, which I think is very cool. I'm, I'm excited to see that. We talked about, about a black thread or things like that, but I think the black would be too stark. I think there's plenty enough black in here. I think the thread, in, in this is a rare circumstance where the thread really is not the focus of this. In most other wallets, it is. The thread is a very important accent. In this, it's just kind of just kind of there, and it shows up here and there, but it's not really the main focus. The main thing you're going to see is going to be that lizard there. Okay, I like that. Let's go ahead and put this together so we'll show you how this works here. So again, the actual structure of this is not the lizard. The lizard is only a kind of a veneer. It is actually going to be the structure done in calf skin. You're going to have, like the V-slot here, you're going to have this basically just on the top there, and that's it. You're only going to see about maybe the top half of this, so all of the strength comes from this nice dense calf skin here. And I do this with different leathers. I'll do it with Patero, I'll do it with, you know, with Chev. Whenever I can do it with calf, with calf skin, I like to, just because, again, it is so dense and fibrous and, and tough. You can do that in these very thin weights without fear of it, you know, tearing or things like that. It, it holds up very nice. Let me see here. Before I go gluing anything, I want to double check and make sure I've got... <laughs> I really need to start keeping better track of these pieces here. So that, okay, so this is you know, this here. This is the V-slot for the left side for port. This is the V-slot for starboard. I'm going to take these pieces, I'm going to put them all away. Put these out of the way so I can't get confused any further. Here's what we're working on. Okay. 
We're just going to use the Sewa glue. Quick. There. Basically, just glue that right to the top. Nothing particularly special or elegant about this. Putting a good bit of glue. Give me. I got to get used to doing it back in the camera space again. We're using a, a lot of glue. I discovered on the last stream that this this leather is a little bit dry, so it, it wicks up the glue very quickly. And you get delamination more than you would otherwise. Okay. Hold on here. Second. Yeah, okay. I skied so little off this, it's actually a little hard to tell which one is the top and which one is the bottom. So I've kind of got to... Yeah. Correct? That's the biggest thing you run into with this, is losing track of what's what and where each piece has to go. Especially because you can see I've got six individual pieces eight with the two back pieces for it. There's a lot of small little parts that go into this. So it's easy to get turned upside down. In addition to talking and presenting as well. So if I go quiet for a little bit, bear with me. I'm just thinking. Sometimes you got to do a big think. <laughs> All right, so there's that piece there. Smart and proper. We'll put those aside. Try and keep them all together as much as we can. Starboard side. Okay. It's a nice clean bond on that. I, I label them every now and then. If it was something where um where there was more than just two card slots per side, I would label them. If you watch the video of me doing the huge full alligator wallet, I did that. I had them all labeled L1, R1, and so on and so forth. But for this case, there are so few parts of it. If you just kind of keep them in the same spot, you're you're usually okay with that. I will use arrows for directions, usually on things like that. Uh I'll mark just an L and an R down the bottom right corners and things like that just to kind of keep everything in and organized. But this one here, this is actually pretty straightforward. So this one is not not too too bad. So we have the beginnings of the card slots there. Let's go ahead and do our outer card slots now. And I forgot I forgot to do back for those. I was missing something. I have to dig into my, uh, on up for one here. Aha, uh -huh. good job. I knew I, was, knew I was forgetting something. I forgot to cut the pieces for the backs, the main card slots. A biggie will do that now. Bear with me, I need to get into my big drawer. This will be a little noisy. I have underneath my workbench, I have a big Sterilite bin leathers that I want to keep out of sunlight and things like that, or stuff I just don't use very commonly. So most of my goat skin and things like that is all rolled up in paper inside the tub underneath my uh, my workbench. So it keeps it nice and clean and out of the sun, but whenever I need to get something, it is kind of a pain, so bear with me here. <laughs> okay. 
one of the last. So. Wait. Checking thickness of that. This. I think I'm going to run these through the Skyver real quick. Let's see here. Okay. Bit of a hitch there. You can see the light catches just right. You can just barely see where it's sky. But I'm not taking a whole lot off. Just a hair. Just a little bit. Anything that you can shave off of thickness at the edge is usually good. Almost every project I do, even the ones that I'm really, really happy with, I almost always end up saying, I wish I had described it a bit more, even if I really didn't need to. There's always a little bit of room to do that, so... <laughs> This one here is, that is the starboard side. That's going to be this one. That's you. What the? The sun came out. Who'd have thought? There. And just before we glue anything, we're just going to double check and make sure. Yes, this is categorically a starboard side card slot. Easy way to remember port and starboard is port, which is left, has the same number of letters as left, and starboard has the same number of letters as right. Yeah, that's cool. That's good enough. When you're lining pieces like this, you don't want to be shy with the glue. Glue is very cheap. Delamination is expensive. Go ahead and, and glue it up. Get a nice tacky surface on there. Ideally, when I'm laminating parts, I like to have it to where when I'm working it down with a glass slicker, I like to see glue come out the edges there. Because then I know for sure there is glue all the way through that piece. And if you're using the water-based glue like I am, even if you get a little bit of stuff where you don't want it to, it wipes up immediately with a piece of, you know, a damp paper towel. So it's very easy to clean, very easy to cover up messes. There's very, very little reason not to use as much glue as you can. There you go, so there's that part there. Let's do the other one. And once we do this, we'll get to the fun part. Actually shaping the...
down. There we go. Beautiful. So the other reason I, I do these uh, this laminated construction, I need to adjust my camera real quick. Turn the exposure down a little bit on that. The sun's back out. Another reason I do this, this laminated construction, is that when you're, if you look at the back of this lizard, it's a little difficult to tell, but it actually is somewhat rough. It feels almost like suede on the back here. And when, if you just left this raw, uh, it would very tightly grip cards. So you'd have difficulty sliding them in and out. It just wouldn't be nice. If you do it with this nice smooth calf skin or with goat skin or something else, you get a nice smooth surface on the back. So the tension of the size of the card slots is what holds the cards in place. There's no rough surface to grip them. They don't wear down or abrade cards. It just feels nice when you're using it. And you'll never see this. You would never, ever, ever notice this with your eyes. But you'll definitely feel it with your hands when you use the card. And thinking about things like that is the difference between a, a nice wallet and a very nice wallet. I try to make them very nice when I can. So <laughs> Let's go ahead. With that now, we can kind of piece together what we got here. Take a look at uh, our individual parts. These are relatively humble beginnings. But these are all the parts we need to make this uh, full lizard interior for our wallet. So the next thing we have to do, obviously, we have to go ahead and, and get these trimmed and, and looking proper. Uh, we'll start with these ones here. We'll start with the outer card slots. I'm using a gel pen, white gel pen. Let me see how well it should. That is almost impossible to notice. So it's going to be a little tricky to mark these out, just because I'm using a white pen on a white surface. But we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Forgive me. I know this will be a little difficult for you guys to see, but I'll do my best. And when you're working with these here, one thing you want to take note of, especially with alligator, but also with lizard, it's a little more difficult with lizard because they're so much closer together. But scribe here, it's a show. These scale separations, you generally want to avoid terminating a line on one of these, um, just because these areas in between where the scales meet are softer. So if you have that soft edge at the very edge of a part, you lose a little bit of structural integrity with that. So you always want to try to, whenever possible, end your line. So this case being the top of the card slot in between these. And lizard is at once easier and more difficult just because they're so much closer together. Either it works or it doesn't. You know, we try to go for as much as we can here, but I can see there's a nice swooping curved line that kind of works with a nice swooped curved line of my Hard slot there, so I'm going to try to follow that as much as I can. Forgive me for getting in front of the camera there. This is the kind of thing that you just really have to be, you really have to be right on top of it. I'm going to mark this with, I wonder if I could mark it with a pencil. Oh, they're in my drawer, that's right. I wonder if the pencil would work. Oh, well, pencil works pretty well, actually, so that's what we're going to use. This is a, uh, I had a set of custom pencils made. And I've yet to give them to anybody. I keep forgetting. I have like 400 of them. I have them in this size, and I also have the thick carpenter pencils that don't roll away. So if anybody wants a pencil, let me know. They're actually, they're pretty nice. They're, they're nice pencils. So that's what we're going to use to mark this edge here today. Very, very lightly going across the edge there. Because we don't really want to, with a pencil, you will get a little bit of impression on it. So we don't really want that. We just want to leave just a bit of the graphite on there. And it's just shallow enough to where you should be able to, to wipe it away with a 
And then on the black spots, we can transition over to the uh, the gel pen. I bought these gel pens at Joann's over the weekend. And I don't know why. They seem to be different than my other gel pens. When they dry, the white like disappears. You, you just can't see it anymore. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Let's see if you can actually... You can just barely make it out. Even I can just barely make it out here. Here in the shop. Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna switch our knife blade out. Lizard is actually pretty tough to cut, which is why it's used for so much watch straps, things like that. I think I've seen people make shoes out of it. We're gonna get a brand new blade on here to make sure that when we cut this, going all the way. I don't want any screw ups on this. And again, forgive me, I'm going to get in front of the camera here. There we go. Nice. That looks smart. Go ahead and do the other one. And as we start trimming the top edges of these, we'll start to get a feel for how this is actually going to look. Make it a little more evident where our edge is there. Again, with doing this, you'll notice from other streams, I try to keep about an eighth of an inch of additional space for trim. I'm trying to keep... I'm getting very tight on this edge here because I want as much of that black scale as I can get match up against that Deloro. Just cleaning up our cleaning up our edges there just to make sure that we're in the margins of our of our exterior and our liner. Pencil's not ideal. I know some of you are thinking, oh, why doesn't he just use a, a black pen? I've used them before, and for whatever reason, the gel pens don't, but the regular black pens bond to the acrylic templates. And then suddenly you've got black pen where you don't want it. Not a good time. All right, again, forgive me. We're going to trim this here. I generally try not to trim directly against my templates for fear of damaging them, but in this case, it's so hard to see the line, I kind of don't have a whole lot of choice. There we go. So there's our rough shape for our two bottom card slots. Greaser heat it up. Let's do the V slots next. These ones are a little easier because there's no... Uh, there's no curvature to it. They're just straight lines, so we don't need to be quite as meticulous with it. We do want to... take our... We can actually take our, uh, our last cut pieces, hold them over top of that, and kind of shift it around and make sure that we've got it the way we want to. And I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, 
This one we can just cut with a straight edge. Nice. Do the other one. And again, on this one, you'll remember that right in here, we've got this piece of scar tissue right here. So, I know, and I know it's very difficult to see with the white on, on the transparent here, but I've got my line marked to where the top of my card slot goes. So I'm looking at this, and I'm keeping it as close as I can to the edge of the black while keeping that piece of scar tissue hidden under what will be the edge of this. So even though we have a, a less than ideal section of, of hide there, we can still use it because it's hidden under a piece that effectively you'll never see it. So you can maximize your usage of the material there. It's good to, uh, it's good to not be wasteful. Uh, when you're working with exotics, you get a very clear vision of what this animal was, and that it was, you know, in fact, an animal. So you want to you want to try and do right by making sure that you're you're not being wasteful. And you're making something really nice out of this uh, thing that was you know, once alive. There, trim that. Go. So again, there's our scar tissue, which doesn't even look that bad, but, you know, if we can avoid using it, let's do it. And it's perfectly hidden under that card slot, and we get nice transition, nice consistency of scale transition, of scale, not only color, but of scale shape. You'll notice these are kind of swooping upwards. These are also swooping upwards. And that, again, that's because it came from the same part of the hide. And it sounds trivial to point that out, but... If you're not thinking about it when you're lining this up, if you were to put these together and let's say you had this going this way, where you had uh, kind of like that, where you had one side going down and one side going up, it doesn't necessarily look bad, but it could be better. And it's getting to be aware of those little things, those little consistencies of pattern, of color, of shape, between multiple pieces of hide, sometimes from multiple parts of the hide. With alligator, oftentimes I'll be using pieces of, you know, of tail mixed with head or neck or with the sacral region. You're getting kind of all over the place with these hides and lining them up to where they all work together and look similar or consistent or even the same. That's what is key to being good at doing these. That's the key part of being good at using full exotics for doing this kind of thing here. Uh, on that note, I'm going to grab a drink of water. I'm going to hit the head. I'll be right back. Let's take, uh, let's take a couple minutes. We'll come right back to it here, and I'll see you in just a few minutes. We're going to trim these a little bit further. We're going to crease and paint the top edges of the card slots, and then we should be able to actually get them glued down and put together and see what it looks like here by the end of the day. So I'll be right back. I'll see you in a few minutes.
All right. Sorry for a little break there. Go ahead and uh, police up the workbench. Get rid of some of these. And again, as always, I know more or less exactly what I'm doing. Um, stands to reason that you probably would not. If you have any questions about what I've done here, or how I've done this, or why I've done this, please ask in chat. Uh, that's why I do this. I like, I like showing people how this works. So again, if there's anything you're unclear about, please let me know. Please ask. Doing these takes uh, a bit of faith because they, frankly, they look kind of a mess until they're all put together and trimmed like that. Right now, it doesn't look like much. You can see we're getting there, but there's a ways to go yet. And you kind of have to keep the faith up until you finally put them all together and do that last trim and bring it to shape. And then you see, ah, this looks like what I thought it was going to look like. But until you get to that point, it doesn't. So <laughs> you've got a bit to do yet. We're just about ready to crease and paint these. Uh, I think what I'm going to do first, I have to do one last thing to these parts here before I do that. And it's another thing that involves me getting directly in front of the camera, so forgive me. I'm just going to do this real quick. I have to cut two notches on each side, and those are to let the bottom card slot sit flush against it. So we're going to do that real quick. Bear with me. That's the kind of thing there that I really, you just have to get right up on it, look directly down at it, and make the cut. And you may recall from last stream, I ended up uh, remaking one of these. Just because I cut it a little too short. As I've mentioned earlier, there is no remaking these. These have to be perfect. Bear with me for a moment. Let me know if I got any bald spots back there. I don't think I do. But if I if I do, I'd rather know now than later, you know. Like I said, those little winglets allow us to seat this flush against it there. We get a nice edge that's consistent thickness. That looks, yep, that looks good. I, I like that already. Liking that already. Let's do the next one. In a rather foolish move, I think I may have drank a little too much coffee today. So my hands got a little bit of a tremor to them. Not a smart move on my part, but here we are. Okay. While I was away, I had the creaser warming up, so we can actually just get right to that. And again, as usual, we're going to start with the back side. But first, we're going to do it again on a piece of scrap. Just to make sure that, yes, the creaser is heated. Yes, the creaser is working. No, it's not too hot. We're not at risk of burning anything. Here. And again, I crease the back side because the tip I use rounds the surface a little bit. So I tend to get a nice kind of rounded top edge on both sides. It just makes it a little bit nicer to use when I use this tip. Now on my camera, I suspect... Oh, no, actually, you can. 
I really thought for sure you weren't going to be able to see that, but you can see the shadow of it there. That makes me happy. Glad that that worked. Curved ones now. And these ones are a little tricky. The straight ones are very easy, but on the curved ones, like I talked earlier about uh, following the patterns of the scales, on these ones very frequently you will be jumping across those valleys. Uh, so you have to be mindful of where your creaser's at, where you can easily slip. So this one here, you generally want to take it a little slower. Be very attentive to where the uh, the tip is going. Yeah, and actually you can, you can just barely make out where that crease is. Camera continues to astonish me. A lot of people ask why I use the round tip so much, uh, because I am left-handed. And all of the tips are made for right-handers, at least the ones I have. So this one is a one of the only ambidextrous tips that I own. And I ended up finding that it works well for me because I do a lot of things with rounded corners and, and, and radii to work around. And the round tip works extremely well for going around those corners like that. There we go. So there's our edges creased. Before we can put these together, we have to paint the top edges of these because we didn't, unlike the last time we did this, these are not folded. These are just two pieces glued together. So there is a raw edge there that needs to be dressed. That will take paint. A little bit of a choice to make. I think just using white paint is going to be the best way for this. I think so. so before we do this, I'm going to hit the, the top of these edges just with a little bit of 600. Just to deburr anything that may have popped up, either a little bit of glue sticking out or something that came out during creasing. Just to smooth that down a little bit. You don't need much. Usually they're pretty good. But every now and then you get a little bit of fiber popped up. Good. Very good. You're going to get to see my extremely technical, <laughs> very serious method of painting these edges. I shake the paint up. You notice you got a little bit of paint left in the cap. That's all we need. Take a fingertip and using surface tension, I'm going to walk it along the edge there. So, add another. And you'll notice that even from just using our fingertip, we've got the edge nice. Back is nice and clean. The front is nice and clean. If you're worried about a little bit of excess, take, give it a swipe across the back there. Send it. Do the other ones. <laughs> My mother is asking me how to... I believe she's asking how to get multiple people to play in her Stardew Valley farm. I got her hooked on that game last year, and she's been playing it endlessly. Turned her into a real... Into a real PC gamer almost overnight. And there's that one there. Clean edge on the front, clean edge on the back. I know the the fellows in the leatherworking Discord all laugh at me for this. I find this method does work 
very, very nicely for me. And that's the key, is that it works for me. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it this way. This is just how I like to do it. If what you're doing is working, and it's getting the results you want, that's probably just fine. So, perfect. We're going to let these dry for a minute. Another key part of uh, leatherworking. Hey, Russian. Hello, my friend. God save the queen. Another key part of leatherworking and being efficient with leatherworking is knowing how to divide your time up. So we could just sit here and talk, but I'd rather do something productive. So we're going to take these parts. Now remember, these are the parts we cut to fill in this top section here. Have. Put them. These are going to go on these pieces here. Now, these are bonded leather sections. These are what's actually going to be the interior structure for the card slots there. And the reason I do that is I like to have these set up so I can stitch through it and then put a liner on the back. And that covers up all the stitches. Everything's nice and uh, thick and spam and proper. So we're going to use this bonded leather interior for this. We're going to glue. Hang on one second. Yep, keep driving. <laughs> Living on a cul-de-sac, we get a lot of people who think that this is the on-ramp to Interstate 80. We get a lot of very confused drivers who just tend to just park and stop in the middle of the street, try to figure out where they're at. <laughs> and that was one of them. Fellow just sitting there, just looking around, just not sure where the hell he was. But you always got to keep an eye out. Neighborhood watch and all that, keep an eye on everything. That's one nice thing about knowing everybody on the street is everybody keeps an eye on everybody's houses. We're all always aware of what's happening, so we have a pretty nice neighborhood here. Anyway, moving along. We're going to get these top sections here glued down. Now, that's what these are going to be. We're going to trim these, glue these down, and have these in place so that by the time our paint's done drying, we're ready to keep moving here. Nautical puns. I only made one. I don't know if that was a nautical pun I, I made earlier. I think it was just a dumb joke. Qualifies a pun? I don't think it is. I'll try to come up with a pun, but I, I haven't got anything offhand, so we'll see. We're going to take our pencil again here. We're going to mark these out. Sure. Stop there. Article pun. I haven't got any good ones. I have been reading uh, D.K. Brown's excellent book on uh, the Grand Fleet, pre-war to post-Jutland. The Russian is well aware of that one. And again, just like I did on the tops of the V-slots, I do need to cut little notches on this one here, so we're going to do that real quick. And that notch is where the top of the V-slot is going to sit. Don't need to come in too far. Usually just about a quarter inch is all it takes. Scallop down. Again, forgive me, I know I'm in front of the camera. I just have to be here. I think you just have to be directly on top of. Yeah, 
Yeah, Arub bought me that book for Christmas last year. Very, very kind of her. She definitely knows her audience. Okay. Oh, so now we're ready to put these together. And now, with these being cut and getting glued down, we'll really start to get a feel for how this is going to look done. Let's go ahead and get on with that. First, we need to make a couple notes about where our parts are going to go. Yeah, the Dan. Yeah, let me know if I got anything going on there, Russian. Much appreciated. Those out. Ha! Ah, you. You nutter, you. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Basic lines down. Let's go ahead and glue these parts together. Left side, U. Okay. Now that uh, Rushton is here, he's usually one of my advocates when it comes to using a lot of glue, so I can use as much glue as I want now. I know I've got a man in my corner, finally. There we go. So there's, there's our top there. You don't need to come down further than that in the course of using it or looking at it. You will never see down there. So that's all you really need to do. One. By the time we're done with these, our paint should be dried. We can heat spread it, buff it a little bit, and that should be sufficient. I don't think we'll need an extra coat on it. Even if we do, that won't take terribly long. We'll find something to talk about. There we go. Okay. So now you can kind of see how this is getting getting together here. Let's check our paint and see if that's dried up. It has. So we can actually start to do a little bit of test fitting here. Looking at that there, we can see that's how that's going to lay there. And we've got our nice transition to black from white, white on the outside, black on the inside. That looks very nice. Go ahead and take our uh, blade tip here. And with the filatus hot, we're going to melt this paint into the edge. Working flat first and then coming back on the 45 angles, melting it towards the center there. Oh. I think I am going to put another coat of paint on this. to build that up a little bit more.
Certainly not the most exciting content, but very important. With that spread down again, we're going to hit it again with a little bit of 600 just to smooth it out a little bit. I like to go over the uh, the edges on the 45s with this just to clean up any little bits of excess paint that may have spilled over or spread over. We're going to do we're going to do one more layer. This layer is going to be a little, little thicker. What's for tea? The only, well, the only tea I usually end up using is Yorkshire Gold. Tried, tried PG Tips, all the other ones. Yorkshire Gold is the best. That's why it's got gold in the name. Usually after streaming, I have a big uh, cup of mint tea, just because it's nice on the throat. Shake up our white paint. Again, for those of you just joining, you'll get to see my very advanced paint method. Take it up, take the tip, take the cap, tip your finger, and done. Use the surface tension to walk it along the edge there. Good, we'll see. Dry. The funny thing about these walls is it feels like it takes forever to get anywhere with them because there's so much time spent in the prep work and making all these pieces and getting them all ready. And then once you get all that done, it goes together surprisingly quickly from there, just getting to that point that takes all your time. Ah, oh, yes, forgive me. As an American, I only know of tea as, an, as a noun and something you drink rather than a time of day. Uh, it's a little early to be thinking about dinner for us, at least. It's only about 1.30 here, so... Frankly, I don't know. There is some shepherd's pie left in the fridge. My wife made. I know she's baking bread today, too. So anything could happen, really. With that paint drying, what else can we do? What else can we work on? Well, we can work on the back. I generally wouldn't have done that until later, but while we're waiting, we might as well do something. So, with using this Delaro for the divider here, uh, this is a nice stiff leather. You don't really need a whole lot else, so we can actually make this whole... The structure of the whole wall it can basically be this single piece of Delaro. Our hard slots will glue to it, our back will glue to it in a floating floating method like it did on the green wallet. We'll show you that here. But it's stiff enough and dense enough to where you don't really need another reinforcement. I don't think we do. It would just be adding extra thickness for no real benefit. I think we can basically get away with gluing this lizard directly to the back of it and call it a day, more or less. Let's see here. That's how that works. I think that will work nicely. I don't think I need to do anything else to it. This one up being a very, very nice, thin, thin wallet as well. Hello, Penny. Thanks for coming along. Uh, for those of you just, just joining here where we're at right now, we've got our pieces cut and ready to assemble. I've got some edge paint drying on them. You can kind of see how we're starting to get things put together here. I'm just kind of filling up time while the edge paint dries, considering putting the, the back on here. I don't know if I want to do a piece of salpa on this or not. Just don't know. I think I need to. Yeah, I don't think I need to. I think I can just go directly from the Delaro right to the lizard, call it a day. I think that'll be sufficient. If 
we'd be adding an extra half a millimeter of thickness to it. And this is intended to be a front pocket wall at that. So every little bit of thickness matters quite a bit. I think I'm going to go with my gut. I think I'm just going to glue it directly to it. We'll have that interior ready to go, ready to assemble. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to get my wax paper out. I'm going to put these all aside here while we wait for that to dry. Let's do some test fitting before we do anything irrevocable. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> before we do anything irrevocable, let's do some test fitting. <laughs> this is my 90 degree jig. This is basically used for gluing wallet backs together. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we're correct, Rushton. Test this fit out here. Well, not everything needs salpa. Not everything needs it. Like I said, if it was if it was something else on the inside, if it was just shev on the inside or something soft, I would say use it. But Deloro is, if you're familiar with Batero at all, it is even more dense than that just because of the, the pattern they, they stamp into it. I really don't think we need it. Piece of size pretty nicely here. That's good. Looks... Good. Shut up, Rushton. <laughs> Take our template and double check. Space. Have I given myself enough space? I have. No. All right. So as I mentioned when I did this on the uh, the green wallet, there is no elegant way of doing this. It's kind of a mess. Um, really no getting around it. It just kind of is that way. Before I do anything else, this is the bottom of the wallets. I want to double check and make sure that my scales are the way I want them. And I think I, yeah, I want them arranged this way. So this is the bottom of the wallet. This is the top. I think that looks nicest. And the way I can tell what the bottom is, if you look, you can see where my scives are along the, along the outside edge and along the bottom only. I leave the center section unscived. Just to get a little bit of thickness there to make the stitch nicer. When you start to stitch through thin areas, you have a little bit of trouble getting them to lay flat on both sides. The top I leave unscived because there's no there's less stacking of card slots up there. I want that little bit of extra thickness along that top edge for rigidity. That's kind of the, the reasoning behind why I do that. So the skive on this looks like this. Come on now. You can barely see that, but... Why is that doing that? Gel pens suck. Hmm. Note, don't buy these again. That is a worthless gel pen. The other one I had would have would have you'd have seen it from a mile away. This one, no dice. Well, enough talk. Let's get to gluing. We're gonna work around the edge here. Generally I like to put glue about the thickness of my my uh spatula here. And I leave all of this open so that the back actually flexes and floats independently of the rest of the wallet. That keeps you from getting any unwanted wrinkles or creases or things like that. And I generally tend to do this in stages. I'm going to do just one side first, just to have an anchor. Not worried about getting excess glue everywhere. That's just wax paper. It cleans right up. If I get any on the interior of the Delaro, it just wipes right off. This section we can do flat for now. Working that down with our hands. Getting the, the lizard nice and flattened out against the Delaro. Fingers. Press it out there. So there we go. So there's our first attachment there. A little bit of glue where we didn't want it. No big deal. Wipe that up with our spatula too. So here's the first of our attachment here. We're going to take the jig now. Now we have one side completely anchored. 
I like to do it in stages, so I'm going to do the center, so I only have to glue this section here, and it's just a little bit easier to hold it down that way, work it down, because it never wants to, to bond immediately on this flex point. So we're just going to do the center, and then once the center is glued, we'll do the other side. Let's get our glue on here. I like to describe it as an elegant solution with an ugly process, because it is always a mess, but the solution itself is a very good way of solving the particular problem of dealing with how do you keep the back from wrinkling or looking a mess when it, uh, when it curves. Did I make a naval pun? I wasn't aware of it. Somebody please explain the joke I just made. And just kind of holding tension on this until this glue sets. This usually only takes about a minute or so. The nice thing about the uh, the Sewa glue is even though it's a water-based, not a contact glue, it does set very quickly. So usually only about a minute is all it takes. And we want to have this break right on this nice center line here. You can see that the pattern of the scales divide right there in the center of the belly. You don't generally want to have your fold right there. Yes, it does, Blake. It helps with the folding of the wallet. It helps in particular by avoiding wrinkling. Uh, you'll notice with a lot of wallets in that center section there where they fold, on the interior especially, you can see a lot of wrinkles or, or things like that. And that's generally a symptom of either A, using the wrong kind of leather for that spot, or B, gluing it flat and then trying to close it. This works to mitigate that. There's no 100% removing it, but you can mitigate it in ways where it at least isn't visible. In this case, we're using, a, number one, a textured leather, which is not going to show wrinkles to begin with, and number two, by doing it with this. So if you don't have one of these jigs, this is the one sold by Ellen Valentine on the Leatherwork School. They're not expensive. Uh, if you're doing a lot of wallet making or things that fold, strongly recommend you use one of these. They make jigs for all different shapes, for bag folds, things like that. Uh, I, again, strongly recommend that you do it. You'll get some people say, ah, you don't need that. I don't need a jig for that, but it does make a difference. Uh, if you care about the way they look, if you care about getting all the little details right, and again, the difference between making a nice wallet versus a very nice wallet, one of these is very important to have. Because you've got a difference of length, uh, and usually on something like this, it almost ends up being at least a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch sometimes in length difference, just folding two pieces like that. That's a lot of length to cover up that you have to accommodate for in here. And doing it this way and leaving the, the pieces uh, floating separately goes a long way to taking care of that. If you just glue it flat and, and bend it, you're going to have a lot of wrinkling. Lots and lots of wrinkling. And certain leathers show that more than others. Uh, certain colors of Batero will wrinkle very badly. The chestnut is one that's really notorious for it. Uh, and others don't. So it, again, it comes down to knowing what your leather is, knowing your construction, and knowing your assembly. That's pretty good there. So now you'll notice when we leave that B, having glued that middle, we have a wallet that naturally tends to want to sit on the 90 degree. It's neither open nor closed. It's right in the middle. That's what we want. We can finish that up without the jig now. Peel that back just a little bit. I think I am going to finish it on the jig, just going to press it flat. Now we want to, you'll notice that we've got a little bit of wrinkling here. We want to, not wrinkling, but just kind of flex in the shape of the hide. Kind of want to work like you'd be laying a decal down on a car. Work from the center, work your way out, and work those flexes out. A Nalgene bottle would work. I, I've done stuff like that before on things that this jig didn't fit. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be... This, is, this jig is nice. Um, if it works, it works at the end of the day. 
I've done them just on the fold of my desk. You know, if it's if it's working for you, that's working. I mean, hell, you just saw me paint the edge with my fingertip, so you know, I'm all for uh, do what works. <laughs> And like I said, working from inside out, working those little flexes out. There we go. Close up my glue before it dries out. So there's our back. You'll notice, that I'll try to show it on the uh, camera. It's a little hard to see, but you can see it flexes a little bit in the center here, independently of the interior. Good. I like that. That's good. By now, our paint should be dry. Let's see. It is paint dried with a little bit of a ridge to it, which I don't like. But I shouldn't have to repaint it. I'm just going to take the heat again. We're going to heat spread these again real quick here. Because we've got a fair bit of paint on here, I don't want to leave the, the heat spreading tip on any one spot too long. It'll start to bubble. We just want to get it warm enough just to spread to work the ridge out. And what we'll do, I don't think I'll need to do a top coat on these. I think I can just buff them smooth, but we'll find out. Don't be afraid to spend a little bit of time on the top edges of your card slots. It matters more than you think. That one looks quite nice. Any questions about anything we've done here? Anything I wasn't clear about or anything you're unsure of, please do let me know. I'm just I'm just motoring along. Now, this has been a lot of work. This has been two hours of work just to get to a point where we can start to put this together. But again, getting through all of this. It goes fairly quickly after all this prep work is done. I, I am a, a man of the people. You're going to get some payoff here. Hold tight. I normally quit streaming around 2 o'clock. It's almost quarter till. We're going to go a little longer today. I want you to get to see what this looks like. So we heat spread those out a little bit more. I'm going to take a dry canvas, and by dry, I mean one that is not wax impregnated. Buff along the top edge. That. I think I am going to top coat these. Yeah. I've done it both ways, Pequod, and it, um, I, I find I like anchoring it. I have never made a belt, so I, I cannot comment on uh, intricacies of that. One of the few things I have never made, and uh, something that my, my good man Jason Paris always gives me hell over. Never made a belt. We'll get there. We'll get there. So, like I said before, what I did on these, I did a, a basic coat, just a thin coat that I then heat spread, and I put a thicker coat on afterwards. And it dried okay, but I had a small trough in the center that I didn't like, so I reheat spread them. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hit these with a very fine 
paint. Uh, just to take off any small little nibs of dirt and things like that, which there aren't really many. The dry buff took care of most of it. I'm going to hit this with 1500 grit, very lightly. Doesn't need hardly anything. Because what happened when I reheat spread it, I got a tiny bit of discoloration on the surface. This 1500 grit is going to take that off. And it could have gone either way. I might have needed to top coat it, but actually just hitting it with the 15 was good enough. We're going to dry buff it again one more time, get some of our sheen back. And the 1500 grit is enough of a high enough of a grit to where we don't really lose much. Those are nice and clean. Now we're going to hit them with a little bit of wax. Then these edges are done, and these pieces are now done and can go together. Motivation during lengthy prepping stages, yes. I talked about this a little earlier, and that um, it does take a certain degree of faith to make one of these because they look an absolute mess up until they're all put together. And you just kind of have to... It's, it's easier for me to do it because I have done enough to where I know that you're going to get through the stage and it's going to look really cool when it's done. But if you haven't done one of these before and you're just kind of unsure of it, uh, you, have to, you have to make yourself keep working on it. You can easily get, a, get to a point earlier on, any, any point we were at here today and look at this and think, oh, this is, this is not going to look very good. But it is. It's going to look really good. And we're actually about to, uh, to get the payoff for that. So we finally, after two hours, got all our pieces ready. Here's all our pieces that we're going to assemble here. These are going to make the interior part of this lizard wallet. And we've even got our back done, too. So we're, we're ready to rock and roll here. Let's do it. Let's get some, uh, let's get some payoff for this. Before we do that, let's double check, make sure we've got everything aligned and ready to go. We've got the right pieces on the right side. Port starboard that's going to look very cool motivation is a tough thing and it, it, it's different for each person funnily enough i used to find um back when i was working full time at the paint shop and this it was hard to be motivated after working a full day and coming home and having orders to fill and things like that and i funnily enough i used to find that streaming on uh, instagram live helped me motivate myself to do more of it talking about it and getting to be enthusiastic about it for other people made me enthusiastic about it. And that's kind of why I like doing this uh, this Monday thing. I do it as much for myself as, as for you guys. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy that people get a lot of benefit out of it, but I primarily, more than anything else, I do this for me because I, I enjoy it. I like, I like talking about it, and I get to bleed off a lot of this energy that I have that I, that's built up over the week, and it's fun just to show stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that other people enjoy it, but... Um, this is one of my ways of keeping motivated. So everybody has their own way of doing it. Now with this assembly, we're going to shift glues. I love the Sable glue. It works for almost everything. I find it does not work well for chrome tan. Don't know the, wh the where's or why's of that, but that's just what I've discovered. So we're going to switch to the uh, Aqualim 315, the contact glue for this. And even with that, we're gonna we're gonna still have to scuff and prep our surfaces, and for that, I just use a scribe or my scratch all on the back sides. Take it, scrape that up, and if you want to see, if you want to see some of those fibers coming up. If you got a little bit of fiber pulling up from that, that's good. That means you're gonna get a very nice, clean, strong bond from that. It will shock you how strong a glue bond can be, with no stitching, no mechanical bond at all. If you do it right, if it's prepped properly, it will hold and it will shock you. <laughs> when, when painting cars, the most important step of the whole thing is sanding the car. If the car is not sanded, if it's not prepped properly, you'll have nothing but problems later on. So take the time, do this, prep your glue joints. You'll be glad you did.
Yeah, you, and, you know, the, the interaction with you folks is just the icing on the cake for it, you know. We are still going to scuff the Salpa. You generally don't, you don't strictly need to scuff Salpa. I like to just because it's consistent. But you can oftentimes get away without having to uh, do that. I am glad that people find this beneficial. Uh, it, it's very humbling to have people tell you that uh, that you've inspired them to uh, to do something, which is not a not a position I expected to find myself in. So it is extremely gratifying to hear that from you guys. Thank you very much for for taking the time out of your day to, to sit here with this old chunk of coal. <laughs> with the uh, the Aqualim, at least in this bottle, this is a very narrow necked bottle from Rocky Mountain Leather. I find that um, rather than shaking it, I stir it like this because it kind of keeps it from building up around the neck there and getting all over my uh, my spatula. This being a contact glue, it does need to be applied to both sides. There. Again, I'm I'm generous with the glue. It takes a little bit longer to dry when you're putting this much on there, but I know that bond is going to be good. That's going to hold until I stitch it. Wax paper back now. Set those aside to pack up. And while those are tacking up, again, making use of, uh, of time here, because it does need to be applied to both sides, we know, logically speaking, eventually we're going to have to put these pieces on, so we might as well prep those too. Then making good use of our time while we're sitting here waiting. Side edge. Lining this up on the back here. So, where to scuff? I do this at an angle here because I know that eventually this is going to be rounded off here. I want to make sure I'm getting glue in the section that's going to be remaining once it's trimmed. While we're doing this, we'll give a shout out to some of my other leatherworking friends who are in the stream today. Thomas Wren, Wren Leathers, Rushton, Rushton Leathers. There's another one in here. Who am I missing? There's somebody in here that I'm missing. Knox from Knox, Knox Box Designs. I think there's one more that I'm neglecting, but forgive me. Now, these can just be set aside because these are going to be, it's going to be a hot minute before we get to these. But when we do, 
This will all be done already. And by the time we finish gluing up these, all our glue will be dried on the other ones. So we can just get right to it. And just trying to be efficient. You don't need to work fast. You just need to work efficiently. Making use of drying time, waiting time, things like that. All just stuff you pick up just from doing it. Here. All right, so now we're ready to do this. Make sure we have the right one. So again, black transition on the inside edge. And the way I've done this, having cut these scallops and everything, I don't need to measure anything. Everything is all done. Um, I just know that all I have to do is line up the top edge of that T-slot with these cut scallops here. And then when the time comes to do the outside card slot, again, same thing. It'll, it'll just push up right there, and it's all done. Your template should work for you. Another part of being efficient is having an efficiently designed template and efficient design in general matters a lot. Up, close up those gaps. Down. There's our first one there. And Roger Bellow from Bellow Leathers. Welcome. I knew there was someone I was missing. Forgive me. So there's our first kind of glimpse at where this is going to go. Got that like that there. Let's see if we've got glue on there. We don't want to really press it down there, but that's kind of how our interior is going to look. We're going to have that transition from white to black and then the nice black center there. That looks good. Now we can stitch these down. And after we stitch them, we then have to align the back but not a big deal. The only thing I dislike about this uh, contact glue is that it is very good glue, but it is very sticky to punch and stitch through. So kind of a nuisance in that regard. Good. Drawer was sticking. I think we'll get these stitched and then we'll have another uh, commercial break and we'll get back to it here. I want to at least get these interior card slots done today and then I think what we'll do in a, in a bit of a break from uh, my normal stream tradition, in fact I, I guess I'll poll the audience here. Generally when I do this I go on and I keep working afterwards through the week and I finish the project. Would you guys like it if I put this one aside and held on to it and we picked it up where I left off next week. What are your thoughts on that? Don, I know you said you were not in a particular hurry for it. If you if you enjoyed watching the process of making it, I'm happy to see it through to the end here. But if you wouldn't mind waiting an extra week for me to uh, get back to the stream schedule, I, I think we could finish it all, all together. If that's something you guys would be interested in, is actually getting to see the uh, the finished part of it too, because I've, I've done a number of these a number of mid wallets where I've just done the interiors and haven't got to the exterior yet. People are into that idea, and if you uh, wouldn't mind waiting a little bit, I think I'm going to do that for this one. Yeah, the cutting mat underneath is the Yellow Tools cutting mat. Y E L L O Tools, no W. That was another gift from uh, from a Rube from a Barwa K W Leathers Barwa Leathers of Kuwait. Very very thoughtful Christmas gift. 
You got the exact size and dimensions of my workbench and had it cut to it. It is a luxury. I recommend it. Let's go ahead and get to the stitch in here. Again, just for these, these go so quickly I'm not going to bother adjusting the camera for it. These are a little frustrating to do because they're kind of, they're so thin, they're real floppy. Kind of annoying to do these T-slots here. But this is the stitch that's going to hold the bottom of the card in place, keep it from falling through. But this was actually the most difficult part of designing this wallet, was figuring out where the bottom of this card slot should be. So that all the cards rested in an even line, and looked proper together. There's more thought that went into that than anything else. I'm going to run, like I said, I'm going to run a little bit longer this, this week. I want to at least get the card slots glued down. Like I said, I want there to be some payoff for all of this prep work, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave you hanging that long. I want to at least get the interior set up, and then we can put it together next week. We're going to go a little bit longer than usual just to at least do that. Because frankly, I'm just too excited to see it all together. Getting that little bit of taste of it and getting the, the T-slots glued down makes me want to see the rest of it here. So I'm willing to keep going a little bit longer as you guys are. And then like I said, we'll call it after that. We'll get to that point. No special backstitch needed for this. This is all hidden, and that's going to be glued over anyway, so. Nothing special here, just doing the traditional, traditional type of backstitch. All right, good. Thank you, Don. I, I appreciate that. I didn't want, to, didn't want to put you out in case you were excited to get it there. For those who, who didn't hear earlier, this is a, a unique opportunity for me in that the customer for this wallet actually lives in my hometown, so when I'm done, I get to bring it over to him and see his reaction on getting it. I almost never get to do that. This one here. Yep. Oh, I picked up the needle and I didn't. Part of why I like doing these mid-wallets is that there's only two of these to do. On the 8-slot bifolds and, God forbid, some of the 10-slot ones I've done, you get to doing this and doing six to eight of these things. It just feels like it goes on forever. And it really doesn't. It takes like half an hour, but still, it just, it just feels like forever. Whereas after this guy here... All the annoying parts of this done. Again, just gluing those ends in.
noticing that I forgot to trim the bottom of this. Take my scissors. This one too. Just make it a little easier to fit that outer card slot on there. But there we go. So there's our setup for the interior so far. Let's lease up our needles. And I think I'm going to take a break for five minutes. Again, I'm going to refill my water. Get the head. I recommend you guys do the same. Remember to hydrate. <laughs> and we'll come back at it. What we're going to do next, we're going to line the back side of this. And then we're going to finish up by gluing down those two card slots. And we'll finally get a, a proper look at the arrangement of this. All of the all of the work to this point will be worth it. I've seen that non-stitching too. I, I also prefer the stitch. I think people make a big deal about about um oh you weaken the leather, you know, you perforate it and you puncture it. It's stronger than you think it is, especially this calf skin. So again, it comes down to knowing your leather and knowing how to use it properly. This calf skin, you could, I don't even know if I could tear it, even at, at this this thin weight here. It's pretty, it's pretty darn tough stuff. Like I said, we're going to throw the Be Right Back screen on. Like I said, reload your drink. We'll be back in, in two or three minutes here, and we'll pick it up. We'll, we'll put the backs on these, and then we'll keep putting these together and get some payoff for this. So we'll see you here in a second. All right. Where were we? Two pieces here. So these are the liner pieces for this. These are going to go on the back. And these really serve to, again, 
when you're putting your hands back there, they're nice and smooth versus, God forbid, feeling the salpa. And importantly, they also cover this stitch, too. So when you put your hand back there, there's nothing. It's only smooth leather. And again, the difference between a nice wallet and a very nice wallet. You don't need to do that, but I like to. Let's see here, and again, I made some quick notations for myself on these as to where I skived them. I was going to go, again, outside and bottom edge. Goes here. This one goes here. And this is always a little bit messy. Get the, the wax paper out again. I know kelp always makes fun of me for just not using a, a silicone baking mat, but I'm a simple kind of guy. Wax paper works. I like to do this before I add that outer card slot, just because it gives me a little more access to this area in here. Just for pressure and for working the, uh, the pieces together. I don't, it probably doesn't make that big of a difference, but to me, I feel like it kind of does. So I like to do it in this order here. So I'll do this, and then I'll glue that last card slot down. So there's the back side of our assembly there. Nice and smooth, nice and covered up. Same for the other side. Again, generous glue. This leather is a little bit dry in terms that it likes to likes to absorb this glue very quickly. So I always feel like this part's going to take longer than it does. I always get I always get those T slots stitched down. I'm thinking to myself, ah oh, man, I still gotta still gotta glue the liner down and everything. Eh. But it's pretty quick, and it makes a big difference. It's important to do. Go pull up our wax paper. Stick that aside. Hold on. Is it almost time for you? Is it? We've been, we have been blessed again. Yeah. Very cute, but I know what you want. Just playing me. Just playing me, I know it. You don't fool me. No. Get that hand off that workbench. That doesn't go there. That paw doesn't go there. Very cute. All right, I'm going to put you back inside. There's going to be trouble, I know it. Got that troublesome tail going on. Your brother, your mom will be down in a minute. Yeah, there are just some steps that are just a pain in the ass. Like I said, for me, it's usually it's usually stitching these down, but on these kind of wallets, it's not so bad because there's only two of them. Get some scuffing going on there. And unusually for me, one thing I'm going to do here, you notice I have these uh, notches cut out on this. 
This one I could have come in a little further with. I'm actually going to take my scissors. Little snip. Little, little awkward once it's glued down. I generally try to catch this before I glue it, but you don't always. Just trim a little bit of that off with the scissors. And the reason I'm doing that is that is an area where that outside card slot needs to rest. If we have it very, very close to that edge there, there's not a lot of room for it to kind of work its way down and make a good glue contact there. So by reducing the, the depth of, or increasing the depth of that, uh, we get a little more, little more space in there. Hello, Mega Swirly. Glad you were able to catch it. Uh, my T-slots do not overlap. They don't step. They used to. In 2020, I switched. Uh, 2021, rather, I switched. Mostly because I, I like the look of a smooth, flush edge. I don't like the, the bumpy step of that. And Steve from uh, Oak and Honey and I laugh because we both, we basically switched our, our methods. He used to do it this way, and I used to do it with the steps. Now I do it this way, and he does it uh, back with the steps again. So it's personal preference. I don't think one is really better than the other. It just comes down to, to which one you prefer. While we're chatting, let's get some glue down here so we can get this dry in. We already glued the back sides of our outside card slots. We don't need to do that. Again, making efficient use of our time. And again, being being generous with glue. This has to hold these in place against some degree of tension until it's stitched down. You need a very strong bond here, especially up here at the top where it's got all that tension where it's got to overlap that interior card slot. You want, you want a very strong bond there. You can tell that even with Using good glue and using a lot of it, we're going to need some clamps there. I, I'm astonished at the, at the weather today. I really, really thought it was going to rain all day. I'm looking outside. There's there's blue skies, puffy white clouds, nice sunshine. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Beats the alternative. We're going to let those dry up. And while we're doing that, two blank cards. When we glue this outside card slot down, we're going to put a card in the preceding card slots. And that gives it just a little bit of a little bit of easement that makes the wallet easier to use for the end user. You wouldn't think that makes a huge difference. And it doesn't make a huge difference, but it does make some difference, so we might as well do it. Put that glue, waiting for that glue to tack up. These ones here are already tacked and ready to go. At this point, we're uh, kind of getting down to it. There's not a whole lot left to do. All our individual parts are pretty much prepped and ready to go together. These are the last two. Uh, I'm actually kind of at a loss as to what to talk about here. We're just literally sitting here watching glue dry. This is one of the last parts to do. Uh, we've made good progress today. Liking the way this looks. This is definitely going to be a portfolio piece, to be sure. Well, while we're waiting, we might as well police up the bench a little bit. 
some of these other templates we don't need. We can put back in the container. Crash. I, I worked so efficiently, I didn't leave myself anything to talk about. Go figure. <laughs> This is my, uh, wow, well, it's halfway through May already. It's hard for me to believe that starting in April, I officially began doing this full-time. Uh, it's definitely been a transition, but I, I am enjoying the hell out of it so far. And, uh, the first week feels like, oh, God, that was, my, that was my first week doing this. And then before you know it, it's the second week, and now it's been the first month, and now it'll almost be the second month. Before I know it, it'll have been a year will have passed where I've been doing this. I'm hoping that it feels, it feels, uh, right. It feels right now. I'm hoping it feels even more right by the end of that. Uh, this lizard skin is from J. Hartke Leather. Uh, H -A -R you know what, I'll just put it in chat for you there. Uh, J is a good man. He's been dealing uh, exotics for almost, I want to say 30, 40 years now. chat there but uh very very good guy to deal with uh if he's out of stock or something just shoot him a direct message and ask him he usually responds within half an hour uh things i buy from him ship the same day so he him between jay hartke and amtan american tanning those are my two go-to sources for uh for exotics generally ring lizard and crocodile i get from jay and most of my alligator i get from amtan i have good relations with both both fantastic Fantastic companies to deal with. Both of them will do you right. And again, like I said, both of them, if you're looking for something specific, reach out to them and ask them. They're more than happy to answer your questions and help you out. Very, very good people working working at both companies. So there we go. We finally got our glue just about dry. You can tell this is dried when it turns clear. Uh, if it's sitting there and you can see white in it, it's got a little bit more to go. But when it's mostly clear, this glue is tacked and ready to go. Let's go ahead... Get our clamps. Because again, like I mentioned, we are fighting a fair bit of tension up here. Now with the card underneath it, it's even more that we've got to deal with. We want to have these clamped down nice and tight so that glue can bond. Let's get this here. Okay, for now. One at a time. Working. There, pressing upwards, closing up that gap. Take our slicker, work it down there. It actually bonded really well, but just to be safe, I'm going to put a clamp on it at the top anyway. Probably don't even need it, but. Go, oh, that's looking that's looking cool. Let's do the next one. This is the payoff. This is this is where it gets finally really, really fun when you get to see the uh the results of all the all the prep work. It all comes to fruition now. And flush and again working upwards working up towards the joint you want to push this so it closes the joint if you push in this direction you will pull it back and you'll open up that gap so push towards towards the, the next surface to close that gap up and again i thought that was going to fight us more than it did bonded right from the start still we're going to clamp it down Down on the bottom down here, it's good. It doesn't need anything. It really just needs it where the tension is. Look at that. That looks cool. That's going to be very, very cool. It's going to get even cooler in a second because we're about to start trimming these to shape. Now. I haven't used the 1816B. This is the 315. And I, this works, for what I do, this works great. I really don't even see much need for, for anything else. 
between the Sewa water base and the, the Aquilin 315, I've got all my bases covered. <laughs> so this here, even though we don't really need to, I'm going to let it sit for just a, just a second to really let it cure up, because we did put a lot of glue on there. If it was less glue, it would bond almost instantly. There's a little bit of cure time in this, so we're just going to let this sit for a hot second. I, uh, I never expected to do this full-time. I started this as a hobby, uh, pure, pure and simple, pure as a, as a, as a way to, to kill some time. And uh, that was six years ago. By the end of my first year, I, was, uh, I started in February, and by November of that year, I was, uh, I was honored to be selected to, to be a vendor at the Butler Institute of American Art in Youngstown. They have a winter show that's juried. You have to actually be juried into it. And they selected me. I, I went and I was only been doing it for about eight months, and I went and sold in the Butler Museum. It was nuts, and uh, that was where I started to really realize it's like I, I could do this on a larger scale, and uh, so I did. I, I worked, I worked really, really hard for for a couple of years to get better. And with doing that, and in particular with the help of the leatherworking Discord chat, with the people there who who took it as seriously as I did, that was the key. They were they were not just hobbyists themselves. It was it was. Um, very important to them that they be the best at it. And with us working together and kind of learning together, we all kind of rose together at the, at the same rate. And uh, here I am now. It blows my mind that this happened. I, I never I never expected or anticipated this, but I, I sure have enjoyed the ride. But if you're not part of the Leatherworking Discord chat, I'll pop a link in, in the, the chat there for you. Feel free to come in. If you want to get better at this, if you're serious about improving and getting good critique and learning, that's the place to do it. I'll grab that right now. Uh, say what is PVA? Yes. Generate an invite here. There you go. If you're familiar with Discord, the app, that'll get you right into it. That is the Leatherworking Discord chat. Feel free to come in and say hello. Uh, it is the best place to be. My own wallet. Uh, yeah, I, while we're... So this it's actually a variant of this. I'll grab it. Hang on. Give me just a moment. Pull my cards out of it. Hang on one second here. But it's funny because I always advise people, oh, you should carry fewer cards. I realized actually when I was talking to the gentleman who ordered this wallet, I'm carrying like 14 cards in this wallet. This is the same, this is actually what we're making today. Mine has a billfold on the back, but this is made out of whiskey batero. I think I showed this on the stream the other day when I was doing the burnishing talk. But uh, this is actually the prototype for this wallet. This was the first one I had made. And it was actually the first thing I made in this workshop after I finished building it in uh, September of 2019. So this was a, this was a kind of a, a landmark piece for me, and I liked it so much I decided to keep it. So this is my daily carry after two years of carry. A mix of Whiskey Batero and Whiskey Delaro. I have not used uh, Phoebing's PVA. This is the only PVA I've used, so I unfortunately can't tell you much about that. I do not have much to say about, uh, about the Phoebing stuff. Oh, hold on. Another visitor. Who could it be this time? Hello. Ah, are you going to let me hold you? You are. Careful. Jumping down. All right. Be careful. That's Sparrow. He's a little more fickle than the other one. Oh, let's go put this away. Mom's gonna pee. All right. So by now, this has surely dried. It's cured. We can take the clamps off and proceed. Take these cards out. 
now we, we really finally get a feel for how this looks. That looks cool. I like that. Happy with that. Tricky thing is going to be marking this to, uh, to trim it here. Uh, I think I know how I'll do that, though. I think I know how I'll do that. <sighs> Don't always have use for this tape. Today I will. This is a Scotch low-tack masking tape. Hey, thank you for the sub. Much appreciated. Mago Blasphemo 666. That's a hell of a name. You better be careful with a name like that. <laughs> I gotta cross myself after that one. Good golly. We're going to use this tape to mark off our edge for the trimming here. Taking our template. Again, I know I'm covering this up, but I just want to get this right. We need to trim this inside edge so that we can stitch it. Now, I know there's various debate about uh, stitching pre or post trimming. I, I like to stitch after the trim. I just find that works best for me. Tape and lay here. Tape down. So doing it this way actually serves two purposes. Number one, we mark our line. And number two, this also anchors the piece down. Just to be safe. I use a little extra side here. Top tip for masking tape from a former pro masker. You're working with masking tape. The longer of the length you have, the easier it is to use, especially if you're working around curves. I'll have to do a I'll have to do a <laughs> a live stream of me masking. There was a time when I was younger, when I was, when I was about 19, I could mask a whole car by myself in 45 minutes to an hour. It didn't matter what kind of car it was, that was how quick I was at it. I kind of fell out of practice when I became management scum. But uh, that was the that was the name of the game back in the Mako days is 45 minutes to an hour to mask a car. No more. Before I trim this, I'm just going to double check myself. Yep, the line is good. I'm using a long ruler, long and flexible, because that lets me that lets me put tension on the front and on the back. It keeps the ruler from slipping. Do this. You can see I'm not strictly worried about making it all in one cut. You can do a couple of shallow cuts and that's okay. There we go. There's our there's our edge there. There's our cut. There's that is ready to go. And, yeah. If you're looking at that, got a little bit of, I need to work a little bit more glue in there just because we kind of cut away some of it, but you're looking at four layers of leather there. And it's only an eighth of an inch thick. And it's even thinner at the outside edges where we actually skived it. I leave these inside edges unskived because I like that little bit of thickness on the inside edge. It makes it easier to stitch. You get a little more structural integrity out of there in a space where extra thickness doesn't matter. So I like to keep it that way. Go ahead and do the other side. <laughs> well, Frank... It looks like this was a a fortunate uh, live stream for you to watch. That I'm glad uh, I'm glad you learned something. Now, normally, it's it's worth mentioning that normally I would not bother using the tape to mark this, but I'm having so much trouble with these uh, gel pens I bought. And the color of the hide is so hard to see it anyway. Tape is really the only thing that'll work right now. Good 
Here's another thing when you tear tape. Hold the, when you're working, hold the masking tape on your wrist. That way you can get a motion to where you can just kind of work it up there and get your finger. When you tear it, tear it over your finger like that. And then when you move your finger, the edge of the tape stays up. That way you're never, that's one of the biggest things you'll find in somebody who's new to masking. Is they're always fighting to find the edge of the tape. You do it that way and you'll never lose the edge. You'll always be able to find it. There you go. There's leather working and car car painting uh, advice all in one all in one place. Again, before we do something dumb, let's double check, make sure that line is good. It is. Everything's lined up the way we want it. Let's go ahead and cut it again. Again, not trying to to work the knife through in one go. Kind of letting gravity pull it through. I find that um, even with a very, very sharp knife, I find that for me in particular, trying to cut through all in one go generally causes me more grief than not. I don't usually bother fighting it that way. Go. There's again, there's our nice edge. Four layers. And again, the purpose of doing those little wing cuts is you cannot see where the seam is there. It matches up flawlessly. And on the outside edge, that makes a big visual impression there. On the inside edge, like this, it doesn't matter so much, but on the outside, when all of it is the same thickness, there are no steps, I, I find that I prefer that than doing it uh, to the overlap. Good. Ah, yes. That makes me happy. Quick look at this, and again, I'm seeing a little bit, a little bit of delamination there. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to work the PVA glue in there, just because I find that it's easier to work into these crevices like this. And stick a clamp on it. Up here, we got a little bit of a. Uh, top and bottom corners there. Needs a little bit more glue for the liner there. And you'll have this happen from time to time. A little bit of delamination here and there it happens, but the key is catching it before the wall it's done. Easy to fix right now. A little harder to fix when it's all stitched together. There we go. That there. There we know. Now we know that there's a there's definitely a bit of glue in there. Let that sit for a second. Now we get to see how our thread looks against this. And it, as um Don and I had discovered when we were looking at it, it should almost disappear against against the black and the white. That's that's about the right degree of contrast. That's about what we're looking for. It's there, but you have to kind of look for it to see it. I think actually what you're seeing on the camera there is more a shadow of it than the thread itself. I think that's going to work very nicely. That. Glue down just a little more. Let's see here. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try using the wing dividers on this. I think it's gonna be a bit of a fool's errand. Actually, that's more visible than I thought it was gonna be. There's no way you guys can see that, but I can just barely make it out, and that's good enough. Fizzles. The important thing with, with these is what I design all my wallets to, to be. It is important that your thread straddle the top edges of these card slots. So I'm looking at my chisels here, and it's just right. 
each tine is directly on the top of the following card slot. That means we don't get any thread or holes piercing the tops of the card slots. Functionally, does that matter? Not really. It's more of a visual thing, but it, to me, it's a very important visual thing. So I go, I go out of my way to ensure that any time I'm doing this, the uh, that is lined up properly. Again, there's a lot of getting down, getting low. And when you, a lot of people have questions, they come to me it's like, how do you get your stitch line so straight? How do you punch your holes so straight? Very little of it has to do with the hands, and almost all of it has to do with the eyes. Getting down low and looking at it. You're know, getting down, judging the angle of the chisels versus the line of the edge there. That's kind of how you get a feel for it. You really just have to kind of slow it down and look at what you're doing. Is the chisel upright? Is it straight against the edge? If Yes, then strike. End. <laughs> that looks good. Good to me. You can see that this whole time, all of that has been for... I haven't even done a single hole yet. All of this time, all of this looking has all been for a single strike of the chisel. And that's, that's what it takes to, to get it right. You know, you got to really look at it and, and think about it. And if you're willing to, to put that little extra time in there, You'll get it. And it's not that much time, but it's time that is well spent. Speaking of time well spent, check out my friend, Time Well Spent, Romanian leather worker extraordinaire. Give him a follow on Instagram. He's a good man. Oh. All that, just for one, just for one punch. But it um, it's that important. On wallets where the thread contrasts, which this one does not, it matters even more. Feel for where the end of this stitch line has to be, and I want it to be right about. There. I like to end the stitch lines on this about three-eighths of an inch from the bottom. I don't like them getting too close to the thread, the stitch line across the actual outer perimeter of the wall, and I like them to be kind of segregated, so I keep them, keep them well away from one another. And by now, our glue has set up on this one. It's all good, so we can go ahead and give this one the same treatment here. Much visible from the wing dividers as we can. Wow, that is hard to see. And getting down low, looking at the line, looking at the alignment of the tines. That will answer. I'm just going to take this and compare it to this one. Make sure I'm ending at the same point. Nothing's more embarrassing than having two different lengths of stitch on the inside edge, which are right next to each other. Yep, that's the same. Okay. Very good. Okay. Our holes are punched. Now we can finally start to get a, a real look at how this is going to look. After we punch our holes, camera them closed a bit. Go ahead and thread the needles here.
right there. When threading my needles, I do like to pull it back and pierce the thread because it keeps it nice and secured. But you pull the needles through without really thinking about is my thread going to come apart? Am I going to lose the needle? Am I going to lose the thread? And then give me a second, I'm going to switch to the black screen real quick. I'm going to rotate the camera here that's facing the stitching pony. Bear with me just for a moment, I'm going to rotate the camera, we'll be right back. All right. Thought I had that it needed to be, and I didn't. There we go. Well, as I was adjusting the camera there, I got a real treat. Kyle, thanks for the sub. Kyle and I went to high school together, and we used to sit... I think I sat in front of you in... I think it was Gabriel's class. I don't even remember. It's hard to believe that that's going on 20 years now. 2005. how time flies. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and thanks for the sub. And just from the first stitch, I can already tell we have picked the right thread color for this. I like the way this looks. Double stitch around the top there. Oh yeah, that's that is perfection. I'm happy with that. This is going to be a fun one to take photographs of. That's always nice when you're working on a project and you, you're already thinking ahead about how you're going to take pictures of it. That's how you know you've done it right. This is going to be very, very cool. Once again, we've come to the top edge. Come to the top edge of a card slot. And I do a double stitch here. I do that not for structural reasons, but again, for aesthetic reasons. And I, I started doing that. This goes back to the question of, do you, uh, are your card slots laid flush, or are they staggered on top of each other? I started doing this back when I was overlaying them, because I found that even with a perfectly straight stitch, when you have them one on top of the other, if you're looking at it, unless you're looking at exactly the right angle, you get, um, it looks like it's a zigzag stitch line. So I found that adding the extra stitch at the top of the card slots that were overlaid um, removed that. It was a visual thing. I just kind of kept doing it, and I, I find that I like it. So the, the way you do that, I've just finished my stitch here. I'm ready to go to the next one. Normally, you would go to the next stitch hole. For this case, you're going to take one one needle. In this case, I usually prefer the needle on the back side. It doesn't matter which, whichever you like. But I'm going to take a single needle, the one from the back, and come back through the hole I just went through. To come back through the stitch, basically making a back stitch. Come out the top. Go back through. And that way you get a double stitch right at that point there. You're right back where you were. You're ready to keep going. 
if you would have gone with both needles and gone through, you would have had, uh, you would have ended up with three stitches there, which is not what you want. Yeah, it's, it's been a few years. No, everything seems to be good. Everything good so far. No complaints from here. Glad you tuned in. Couple, couple Gerard faces in this stream today. That makes me happy. And it's so rare to uh, have anybody even remotely local. That uh, that black glaze wall that I did with the yellow stitching, that was for somebody kind of local, Beaver Falls, so that was cool. Then uh, to be able to get to do something for somebody in Girard, that's even better. A, a true, true treat for me. Almost down to the end here. Has anybody here not seen the hidden back stitch yet? If you haven't seen the hidden back stitch, I'll try to show you on this, but this thread disappears so completely it's going to be hard to show. That's trippy. Yeah, this this almost has the this ring lizard almost has the same kind of effect as uh, the old uh, dazzle camouflage they used on ships. If you're a history nerd like myself, and you've seen that the, the zigzag black and white paint schemes on ships in World War II, uh, surprisingly effective at uh, anti-submarine. You get to look at, and you kind of can't tell what the shape of the ship is, which angle it's moving, how fast it's moving. It, it obfuscates a lot of that, and when you're when you're up close against this ring lizard, it does almost the same thing. It is tough to see. I can barely make out the stitch, and I'm right in front of it. Whew. Rub my eyes after that one. Good golly. Work some glue onto each end of the thread, pull the thread through tight. You want to work that glue through the stitching holes. And then while the glue is still fresh, get out of the stitching pony, beat the devil out of it. purpose of that is, number one, we're going to hammer our stitches anyway to close up the stitching holes, but you want to close up the stitching hole while the glue is fresh so that it grips it and holds it in place. You get a very, very strong glue bond for your back stitch from that. I, I actually can't even see where. I can only tell by looking at the exit hole on the back where the stitch hole actually is. It, it is that hard to make out against the ring lizard. That's going to be a treat to stitch the exterior of. <laughs> for those of you who were here from the start, I thank you for joining me today. This was, a, this was a long haul for this one. I, I normally would have stopped about an hour ago. So if you've come all this way, I appreciate the company. Thank you very kindly for that. This was, a, this was three hours of work just to get the interior made. So there's, a, there's a lot that goes on with these. And I, I think that's why a lot of people are intimidated by doing these kinds of wallets. 
Uh, like I said, the, the material cost is extreme. And not a lot of people are willing to take the risk to do it. And then once they do it, they're like, oh man, I don't want to take the time to do it. But I, I like to. I think this is a, a very unique wallet. Anything you're doing with full exotic of any kind is going to be very, very interesting. But I think, uh, I think I have a good niche. People come to me and ask me to do these, which is a good sign. I generally don't have to do much convincing to, to get them to, uh, to commit to it. So that's, that's a good thing. But if you're able to, uh, if you have the time to experiment with this, I recommend it. It's a very unique thing, and not a lot of people can do it. So I hope that uh, today's stream answered a few questions and, and revealed some of the secrets of this. I said early on in, in this, it is at once easier and more difficult than you think. Remember the wallets, adhesive-backed polyester lining material. I think um, I don't use any, any liners like that. I know people do use it, and if you ask in the Discord, somebody will, will certainly know. But I, I make it a point to try to keep my wallets all leather. I try not to do anything with, with you know, nylon linings or things like that. I, I've always been of the opinion that if you're getting so thin that you need to line it with something that isn't leather, you're basically just making a department store wallet at that point. If, you, if you've gone that thin, you've probably gone too thin. Uh, so that's just been kind of my take on that. I generally try to keep it only leather. I'll use things like Salpa for reinforcements and for structural components, but that still technically is leather. It's not, uh, you know, it's not nylon bonded or things like that, just because that's kind of the path I've chosen to do. And this, of course, is my opinion or opinion, if you will. Plenty of people would disagree with me, and that's fine. We all make what we want to make. Room for everybody. This is just how I do it. Sadly, Pequod, I do not have an answer to your question, but again, the Discord most certainly will. Spot need just a little bit more glue. As I'm stitching, I kind of test the edge. I kind of try to peel it apart, identify any faults, and fix them now. I have no idea what size needles I'm using, and that's John James's fault. Because John James needles, that's the brand I use, uh, they have a different size, whether you're in America or Europe. So I have not the faintest. I I don't remember. I've had the same set of needles from when I started, and uh, that's that. <laughs> Pequod, uh, you might be better off just getting the a roll of the low tack masking tape. Right, it might save you a little bit of time. It's a little more expensive, but it is uh, basically exactly what you're looking for in that regard. I'm going to wrap it up here very shortly here. I'm going to finish this stitch, then I'm going to crease the edges, and that's it. So if you have any questions about today's stream, please put them in the chat now so I can actually answer them. Um, if you miss me and, and I don't answer them, feel free to email me or get me on Instagram or in the Discord chat or whatever. I'm, I'm always happy to answer questions. But like I said, if you want a direct answer, now would be the time to put it in chat. If you found this video helpful or entertaining or somehow both, I thank you for that. It means a lot to me. I thank you for being here. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna support me, the best thing you can do is simply buy one of my products, and maybe I'll make it for you. And short of that, there is a thanks button. You're welcome to uh, feel so inclined. You're welcome to click on that. Otherwise, just a simple like and subscription also helps me. So any of those is appreciated. Whatever you feel I was worthy of, certainly be grateful.
give me just a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to a black screen real quick just so I can turn the camera back around, and we'll focus on the uh, we'll focus back on the top down and do the creasing. Hold on, I'm trying to remember how to... I, for the life of me, cannot remember how I had the camera now. Have it like this? That can't be right. I think it's upside down. Let's see. That... It is upside down. Hold on. Aha, there we go. Okay. <laughs> that's how it's supposed to be very good sorry about that <laughs> and before we go too much further let's lease up the needles and thread even though the door of the workshop is shut we always like to remain cat conscious around here it's awesome The greaser is still hot from earlier, so we don't need to wait for it to warm up. Get a good look at how this actually is going to look here at last. Long road to get to this point here. Back done. I know it is dubious how much of this you'll be able to see on the stream, but you can definitely make it out in person. Turn it right. Maybe you can catch a glimpse of it. Yep, if you look, you can just... You can just make out the stitch line, and you can just make out the crease on top of it. That's how, that's how closely that stitch matches the black and the white, which is remarkable considering that it's, it's working off of two colors there. We really, uh, we really picked that one right. Okay. Whew. Nothing wrong with a little overtime. So there's our interior. That's going to go against... Here's, here's the exterior. That's going to go against this. The inside. I like that. Almost get kind of a tuxedo look with the... Uh, the black stripe down the center there. I'm a fan of that. I like that quite a bit. And then, of course, stitch line on the top and the bottom. The gray will be a little bit more visible against the black than it will be there, so it'll kind of tie it all together. Then our just black and white exterior. That's going to be very, very unique. That will be a statement piece right there, but not overly flashy either. The colors kind of, I don't want to say bring it down, but they, they keep it from being too, too out there. It's certainly unique. But it's not terribly flashy. I like that. I'm happy with that. Punching holes all the way through for the stitching that will be seen on the front and back of the wallet. Would you say you hold the iron perpendicular 
or slightly slanted toward the stitch line. I try to keep it perpendicular. There are cases where, where I'll have noticed where I, I'm my attachment is a bit off and I need to, to angle it a little bit, but generally you want it to be perpendicular. There are specific cases where you'll where you'll have to angle it. Fortunately on this one everything went together just right, so there was no need to work any angles or things like that into it. Um, I do have a good example of that. Hold on. It's so it's so minor I don't even know that it'll show up on, on camera. On this green wallet here on the edges of the card slots. The way they glue together there ever so slightly, one is ever so slightly higher than the other. And when you're punching a hole, that matters quite a bit. Uh, even though you can't really see it, you could just as easily punch a hole through it. So on this one here, I did have to punch a hole, not perpendicular in relation to uh, to this way, but I did have to punch the hole per a little angled going through this way to kind of make sure that it straddled the top edge of each card slot. So that that's one time I would say I'd have to do that. Uh, otherwise, in most cases, generally, you don't have to do it. Just try to keep your lines as straight as you can, and the, the irons go perpendicular and everything's hunky-dory. But it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> Put this one back. I think that's going to wrap it up for the day. Now, like I said, if you have any questions or things like that, do feel free to email me or reach out to me in the Discord. Uh, this was a long one, so for those of you who stuck through from the start, I hope, it was, I hope it was worth it for you. It was certainly worth it for me. I'm very happy with how this looks. This is going to be an incredible piece when it's all said and done. Even with the edges still a mess, once they get trimmed up, it's going to look remarkable. This is going to be a very, very unique piece. Don, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, make it for you. I hope you enjoyed watching me make it. Uh, like I said, this went longer than I anticipated, but we got, uh, we got pretty darn far. I'm going to hold off on doing any more work to it. I'm going to keep this one for next Monday. We'll get this thing together and finish it, and we'll really get to see the reward for all, all of the work today. So three hours of work just to get three pieces ready to go, but it goes fairly quickly from there. I know I said that before, but <laughs> nothing's really quick when you're doing this. Again, thank you very much. I appreciate all the support. All the kind comments mean, mean very much to me, so thank you for watching. I hope you learned something, and I hope you had fun. I know I did. So we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good day. If we get any nice weather here, I, I, uh, I enjoy, uh, I'm going to go enjoy the day. I hope you guys do too.